No, don't be an astronaut, be a doctor. It's a better career. I'm biased. Hey everybody, Dr. Mikhail Varshavsky here, but many of you know me as Dr. Mike from my YouTube channel, where I make educational, but also very fun videos. I'm also a practicing board certified family medicine physician. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing medical games. I play video games all the time as sort of my pressure release valves. Some of them are medical games, but every time I've played them, I've always found that they were somewhat anatomically inaccurate. But when that happens, it could be a good learning opportunity. We can have some fun. We can figure out what doctors do. We can laugh about it because it's true what they say. Laughter is medicine. So if we're going to be watching these games today, at least let's get a laugh out of it so we can get a benefit. Surgeon Simulator. If there was ever a classic medical game, it's this one right here. Whoever is playing this game is quite good because when I tried doing this, I was like, stabbing the person's lungs. What most people don't know is the hardest part of this game is the controls. Trying to figure out how to move all the fingers and the tools so that you don't cause any excess damage. That was a good cut. <laughs> but then picking it up is always a challenge. <laughs> Just throws it. So I think this game is meant to be a comedy because while yes, you're performing a medical procedure, it's not realistic. First of all, the person's not wearing gloves. And then you're just taking out an organ and you're just chucking it. <laughs> That's not what we do. <laughs> We're getting the organ. Look, look, watch. He's gonna drop it, it's gonna be a success. Surgery complete looks fine, I'm sure he'll live. Clearly, first of all, I'm jealous. This person got an A++. The best grade I ever got playing this game was a C. And I'm a real life doctor, in all reality. This game's not realistic. We don't perform surgery like this. But if you wanna check out the anatomy, have a good time, make a few cuts, pretend you're a surgeon, have a good time. All right, first of all, just looking at this screen really quickly, the heart rate's 21 beats per minute. Normal heart rate is between 60 to 100 in order to maintain proper blood flow. I wish sutures were that easy. <laughs> and then you're just good to go. No, when you're doing sutures, you always want to space them apart evenly to make sure that the pressure is evenly distributed alongside the injury. Oh no, vitals are dropping fast. Wait, we're doing an emergency thoracotomy? I'll perform a lobectomy. So lobectomy is taking out a lobe of the lung, but I don't understand how this assistant giving you instructions knows that there's something wrong with the, the lungs. Whoa, okay, okay. This is a really poor diagram of a heart with glass shards <laughs> inserted into it. So if a heart is penetrated with any one of these glass shards, you can have major bleeding. Because not only does the heart have blood in it that it pumps out to the rest of the body, the blood needs its own blood supply. I'm not a trauma surgeon, but in, if you're thinking about this logically, if you're gonna take out a glass shard of the heart, you're not gonna take all of them out and then be like, now what do we do? You take one out, you repair the damage of the one that you took out, and then you move on to the next one. You don't take out all the glass shards out while the person's bleeding out and dying. <laughs> and we don't just put glue on the heart and call it a day. Oh, he's suffer- See, here we go again. He's suffering cardiac arrest again. We need to revive him. And right away, they bring out the shock paddles. This is usually incorrect. There's only a few rhythms that we actually do shock. That's why we call them shockable rhythms. But in order to establish that, that takes a few moments. So what do you do first? You start chest compression. Imagine we had to shock patients and hold it right to the exact amount when it reaches a certain bar and let go. And if we do it too much, the patient suffers. This doesn't sound quite accurate. What is that? <laughs> I don't understand. Why does the patient keep bleeding? Oh my God. It's a complete dissection. He sutured the myocardium in a split second. This game's ridiculous. See, they just made an incision in the chest. What about breaking ribs? How do you get through the ribs in order to get access to the heart? We have to be realistic here. This game is not realistic. That's what I give that game. <laughs> not only is it inaccurate, but they're not even hyping you up for saving a patient's life. They're kind of just, eh, doctor, maybe we should wait for someone better than you. Time to pick a career. Guess what I'm gonna do, obviously. First of all, we gotta call this out right, right off the bat. This symbol that's right next to the word doctor is not the symbol for doctors. This has been incorrectly used for a long time. It's actually a single staff with a single snake going around and not the double. No, don't be an astronaut, be a doctor. It's a better career. 
biased. Who doesn't want to be held responsible for another sim's health and well-being? A doctor who can advance in the medical ranks will find themselves rewarded with objects like a standing surgical light and a full-size skeleton to brighten up the home nursery. That all makes it sound worth it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Does this say hiring at $18 an hour? Oh, as a medical intern. When you're a resident, you're getting paid a flat salary, despite the fact that you're working ridiculous hours. So there's been plenty of times where I worked an 80 hour work week, which is obviously quite stressful. Once you divide it up, you're making less than minimum wage, but you're also getting rewarded with knowledge and experience. So I guess that's worth something. But still, when you're trying to make ends meet as a resident, it's not an easy go. Why is this Sim cleaning the bathroom? I thought he was a doctor. As interns, you get to do a lot of what we call scut work but that never really means you should do work that's outside of the scope of being a doctor. Okay, what's happening here? They're having a cup of coffee. <laughs> you get an achievement point for having a cup of coffee. So this is cool. I like this little interaction that's happening with the pediatric patient here. This type of interaction is accurate. Whenever you have a patient, you need to not only talk about their condition, you need to get them to trust you. You actually need them to like you. So this type of like thought bubble thing where you have to give a patient a compliment, you have to ask them how their day is like, very accurate and something that a lot of doctors aren't able to do because we're oftentimes rushed. And that's why patients complain. So if we take our time, we talk to our patients, remember that they're humans, we're gonna do better that way. I played this game. So this game is really cool. Not only are you building a full hospital, you're building individual rooms, you're hiring staff, you're trying to keep them happy. You're also thinking as a city planner and you have human personalities involved in this. So this presents a true challenge because some nurses may be impatient, some doctors may be rude. Whatever ha you have, you need to address it as the administrator of being a two-point hospital. So there you go, like you see you have the expenses, the revenue and you have your profit loss. A lot of people don't like the business side of medicine. And I understand. As a doctor, I want all my patients to have insurance coverage. I wanna make sure that everyone's covered because when people are covered, not only are they getting better care, they're getting preventive care. Dr. Mario, I've never heard of this one. Excited though. Whoa, this is literally Dr. Mario. How did I not know that this was a thing? And why am I so excited about it? What, is this like Tetris? This is Tetris with like medicine. The one thing that I gotta talk and do a little consultation with my buddy, Dr. Mario here, I guess my colleague, Dr. Mario in this situation, is we shouldn't be pill pushers as doctors. We shouldn't just be chucking pills at our patients. In fact, if we just focus on that, we'll oftentimes miss the greater problem that we could be fixing where we don't even need the pills. So Dr. Mario, shape up. Stop throwing pills at everybody. I love playing games, and when we can play games that are actually medically relevant, it makes it a lot more fun for me. Because when we're in the hospital, we have to be quite serious, we have to make sure that we're following all the rules. In these games, there are no rules. The Two Point Hospital game is probably the most realistic because it really takes into account all the complexities of running an entire hospital. The most unrealistic game is Surgeon Simulator. I mean, we're not chucking organs around, we're not performing surgeries without gloves. That one's obviously the jokey one. But the one that gets me the most mad is Dr. Mario. Not only does he throw pills, if you look at the screen, it says virus. We don't treat viruses with antibiotics, which is what Dr. Mario is throwing at his patients. If you haven't seen any of my videos, type in Dr. Mike, doctor spelled out, or just click the link below in the description. As always, stay happy and healthy.